<laughs> ESO is easy. Oh, why'd you do that? Did that hurt you half-witted dog face deadbeat? Holy crap, what's going on? Didn't your mother ever tell you not to go inside because you're so freaking ugly? Seriously, man, I, I don't want no beef. Oh, now you were vegan, eh? No, please, please just tell me what's going on. Oh, oh, you're a new player. Okay, got it, got it. Well, welcome to ESO, buddy. Welcome indeed. Today, we're going over the official Kev DeWitt Guide to the Best Form of Leveling. Honestly, I've never made a video explaining a smart way to level, only the mindless fast ways to level. People get to level 50 all the time and immediately fall into this scenario. Finally, after 5 hours of selling my soul to grinding, I've hit level 50. Wait, I I I've got no skill points. Wait, now I've got to grind for sky shards? When is this grind going to end? Trust me when I say this, grinding, unless there's a beautiful XP bonus in effect, is fast but not practical. Even if you do get a character to level 50, half of your trees aren't leveled, you have no skill points, and the entire world is almost completely closed off to you. You done goofed, kiddos. All right, let's kick this thing into high gear. First things first, download Minion Add-on Organizer, then acquire Sky Shards, Destinations, and Lore Books. You're gonna need those. And next up, log in with your ultimate level three nerdling. Now you need some gold because you're gonna wanna upgrade your bank space at least once or twice, which is only around 2400 gold. You can easily make that by selling stolen green and blue items from drawers, desks, trunks, chests, all that good stuff. But make sure to only sell the stuff that's 100 gold or more or else it ain't worth it. Okay, you've bought your bank space, but it's time to now, buckle up homeschoolers, make friends. No! Horrifying, I know, but this is where I'm gonna get a little greedy. Honestly, let's face it, you need a guild full of people, nice people, willing to help you out because your one friend isn't always going to be online. Hey Charles, why aren't you playing ESO? I need you! Daniel, I'm on my honeymoon, I can't play right now- DON'T GIVE ME THAT CRAP, CHARLES! If you need a guild full of people, check down in the description below on how to join my personal guild, otherwise, you're on your own. Now before you start your quest, here's what you need to get. A full set of training gear, including your weaponry and armor. Jewelry is the only thing that can't have training on it. Make sure that if you're Magicka, go with 5 light armor and 2 heavy. If you're Stamina, go with 5 medium and 2 heavy. The more armor you wear in a specific size, the faster to level that tree. Using training gear will power level the trees on whatever you're using, abilities, skills, all that crap, and make sure that when you hit level 15, you do have a secondary weapon to slot that is also in training. Now for abilities, DON'T PUT SKILLS INTO PASSIVES! Passives are a beautiful thing, but for a starter, they're nothing but a waste of points. Nature Scout Norman here, Cavdua. Passives help me survive out in the wilderness. Why don't I want them? Congrats, Norman. Today you've earned your stupid questions patch. I'm here to level you, not to practically play the game. You want to level? Spend skill points on active abilities, not passives. Passives don't level you at all, they just give you extra perks. This way, you have more points to spend on active abilities and actually level up those class trees. And on a side note, the more abilities you have from the same tree on your skills bar, the faster it will level that specific tree. At the start, you're gonna only have access to the first ability on your class trees, so quickly hit level 4 and unlock all of your class abilities and one weapon ability. Put those on your bar, and BOOM! You're a murderer! Now, going back to the whole slave si- I mean friend thing, there's a few more benefits that you get from having them with you. Not only can a friend carry you through the delves if they're a higher level, but you also get bonus group XP. Two people only, three is a crowd, and limits your XP. Hey. Can I join your group? And limit our group XP? Huh, later, Deltia Gator! <laughs> and just as a quick side note, if you're an addicted rich slob nerd like me, except for the rich part, ESO Plus actually gives you a 10% XP bonus in inspiration, experience, gold, and researching. Now, before you head out on your geeky adventure, make sure you hit the Fighters Guild and Mages Guild just to get those skill lines. As soon as you have the trees, you can start leveling the skills. Delves contain lots of zombies and danger killing to level up your fighters guild and a ton of lore books for you frickin nerds to read to level your mages guild. And speaking of delves, let's show what we're going for. You see, all delves contain a boss to kill, enemies to slaughter, books to read, and sometimes lore books and sky shards. 
I mean, I mean, I mean, Cam do it. How exactly do we approach this kind of scenario then? Oh, question of you lonely loser who lives to be a comedic example. This is your jackpot of lovely. No, it's not exactly grinding, but by hitting these dells one by one, you get to collect all of the loot inside. And what do you do with that loot? Well, if you've got all that useless garbage or stuff that can be sold for more than usual, you make gold. If you have intricate items or random weapons, armor, or glyphs, you can deconstruct them for extra leveling and resources. And finally, if you want to become a crafter later on, sentenced to be forced into work by those beneath you, you can research the traits on said items. And trust me, if you're wanting to become a crafter, RESEARCH THOSE TRAITS! Now that you're starting to make some gold, immediately, as soon as you can, buy your first mount, equip it, and then start upgrading it right away. Moving back to Delves, read every single dang book in those areas, as they can actually level you up in different skill trees, potentially even unlocking new ones. You can pick up that Hunger Games book and BOOM! Your archery goes up by one, and you gain the skill tree intense drama. Easy as that. And what about that new higher level gear you're picking up? You put that on, right? WRONG! Get rid of it! It becomes useless in no time at all. Just like your high school education, your training gear lasts you until you graduate level 50, and then it becomes useless! So now the leveling has begun. It's time to run around the world, going from delve to delve, picking up every single sky shard and lore book along the way and within the delves, as well as hitting way shrines, which, unlike your collection of 50 fidget spinners, you'll be thankful you acquired later on. I mean, I mean, I can't do it, but what about bosses, points of interest, public dungeons, dolmens? Two times in one video? How can an elderberry mind even handle that many questions in a day? Well, the answer to that is no. Unless you've got an actually good partner, Public dungeons can be quite difficult to do by yourself. Unless a dolmen is actually active with other people that don't trail off the path. Points of interest are like drama YouTubers. They're marked on the map but provide nothing important. And world bosses just take too long for little XP and not even close to the amount of loot you'll get in a delve. Anyways, I'm off. I'm out. I am done talking. Except for one last thing. Do you want to-